They say a dog is man's best friend, but I'm more of a cat person. Maybe this project will change my mind. Hey Spot, go fetch me a fritter and a coffee. Fetching one fritter and one coffee. Sometimes if you're in the middle of work and you just can't stop but you really need a pick-me-up, it'd be great if someone would go and fetch you a snack or a coffee. Now normally, since this is the armory, we stick with robot arms. But today, we're actually going to use a nice set of legs. We're going to use Spot from Boston Dynamics. We're going to use some super accurate GPS and some AI to have Spot travel all the way across my tiny little town all by itself to go get snacks from my favorite restaurant. They have awesome apple fritters, which would be a great pick-me-up in the middle of a busy day. The first thing we need to do is be able to set up voice commands. Now, I've used Google Assistant in the past, and that's okay, but that requires an internet connection. So whenever you speak, your voice is uploaded to the cloud, it's processed in Google or Amazon servers, and then the result is downloaded to the device. That doesn't really work in our case, because there's lots of time where Spot won't have access to the internet. It'll be wandering around town getting snacks. So we need to do all of that processing locally. We're gonna be using NVIDIA Riva for this. Now this is a full speech AI. So it will both take audio and turn that into text, but it will also take text and turn it back into audio. And we're gonna be using this in both directions in this project. Riva will be listening to my voice through a microphone on Spot. When it hears Spot and Fetch, it will then listen for what item it needs to be going to get. Once it hears that, it will turn it to text and head off to the store. Hey Spot, go fetch me a fritter and a coffee. Fetching one fritter and one coffee. <laughs> Once it gets there, it'll turn that text back into audio so that it can converse with whoever is there and actually ask for the item. Spot is doing all of the interacting with humans all on its own. Spot know where to go. To help with the navigation, we're going to be using this 3DM GQ7 from MicroStrain. Now, this is basically a full navigation system in this one tiny little box. So it has an IMU that it can use to actually measure where the robot has moved, and it also has two GPS antennas, one at the front and one at the back. Now, these two together, mixed with this RTK unit, also from MicroStrain, this thing can get super accurate location anywhere in the world, as well as orientation. And if it ever loses a GPS signal because it's under a tree or under a roof, the IMU in this will take over and will still make sure that the robot doesn't get lost. The path to the store is just a list of GPS coordinates that the robot's following. Now there's a lot going on in this. A little bit too much to try to squeeze into this video with Spot. So I'm actually going to be using it in an upcoming project. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when those videos actually come out. Why does it spot bump into anything? Spot has five depth cameras all the way around it. It has two at the front, one on each hip, and one at the back. Now, how depth cameras work is very similar to stereo cameras. They have two lenses that they use to look at the world, and depth cameras actually have an IR emitter as well. So they emit infrared light, and then seeing that light can use that to measure depth. Using these, Spot can see 360 degrees all the way around itself so that it can A, not run into things, which it will do all by itself, but B, it will look at the ground to figure out where it needs to place its feet. Once it knows the ground around it, then it can actually start to place its feet always on obstacles. It can use that to actually plan how it goes up and down stairs which is a big difference between a legged robot and a wheeled robot. The robot is getting a ton of data from the depth cameras, but that's a lot of data for the robot to process. 
So what it does is it looks at all of the obstacles that are around the robot and collapses them into what's called a cost map. Now this is a 2D map that shows areas that the robot can go, can't go, and should maybe try to avoid if it doesn't have to be there. Once it has this 2D map, it is much easier to calculate where the robot needs to go to avoid hitting things. The GPS is giving long distance paths of where it should go, but the cameras are watching to make sure that the robot is avoiding everything on the way. There's a lot of data that we need to process through this. We're getting point cloud data, video data, we're running multiple neural networks, we're doing navigation. All of that takes a lot of processing. Now normally to deal with a lot of that data, you would actually export it to the cloud, do processing on some external servers, and then get results back. But that doesn't really work in this case. What we're using for that is the new Jetson AGX Orin from NVIDIA. This thing is built for edge robotics. It has about six times more AI processing than the previous generation of Jetson, and almost 10 times more than the Jetson NX that I had been using in other projects. That is an awesome amount of AI power that you can actually use completely locally. The Orin is powered directly off of the spot, so all sensor data goes directly into it and it does all of the processing locally. That makes setups way more powerful and also much simpler. Does Spot know how to cross our road? As Spot is going to go get my snacks, it's going to be heading out into the real world, which means it's going to be interacting with people and vehicles on the road. Now, as it's crossing roads, you don't want it just walking out blindly into traffic. So we're going to be using the cameras on spot and feeding those camera streams into an AI called DashCamNet. Now, this is a network also provided for free by NVIDIA that is meant for looking for vehicles and people and other objects on a moving vehicle like a dash cam. When Spot gets up to a road, it will stop, look through its cameras, and if it sees no moving vehicles, then it's okay to proceed to the next part of the mission. Both Reva and DashCamNet are both provided by NVIDIA for free, and they're set up to use their Tau framework. Now, Tau is a really easy way for you to take those networks that already exist and already work but add your specific information that you need, maybe a custom voice or certain new types of vehicles that aren't common to be seen. You can very quickly add to those networks and all of a sudden you have a brand new network specific to your application without needing to train an entire network from scratch. One fritter and one coffee, please. You got it. Here you go, Spot. There's your change. Now go home, Spot. Guess who's back, back again. Spot is back. Tell a friend. Here is your delivery. I still don't like dogs as much as cats, but having a dog that delivers you snacks certainly has its perks. 
As usual, if you like videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified of ones in the future. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey Spot, why aren't dogs good dancers? I don't know. Why? Because they have two left feet. Ha 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 ha